Well, 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 welcome everybody. Hello, hello, hello. Hope we're all doing good. Uh, it's another day, another Grenth scale. It's, it's occurring to me now that I've actually started paying attention to which tournament is which. It seems like I'm basically only ever going to be doing Grenth's game as long as it's this time slot. Which I don't want it to be, because I want to show you, like, this is legions and stuff like that. But hey, uh, yeah, so I'm back. I've been doing more overlay work. Pretty much all the work I've done in the past 24 hours has been on overlay work. But um, I really don't have much to show for it, because I was learning a lot of cool things with uh, a, a little-known member of the community that you might uh, be aware of called That Shaman. So... Um, I've got some stuff to show you, some prototypes, some whatever, uh, but we will do this. We are early here because, uh, oh my god, that was loud. Wow, hold on, that must be coming out of the wrong speaker, surely. Uh, I got a lot of different stuff going on. Um, oh no, it is coming out of the right speaker. Thanks very much, Lily, that's really awesome of you. Um, I completely lost track of what I was saying. Anyway, look, we're going to just do the intro. I'll see you all in a second and we'll talk about some stuff. Yeah, that one. Okay, I'm back. So, <clears throat> let me uh, close Discord down as well, for just for this one. Normally, I like to leave it open, but I want things as clear as possible here. Um, so, uh, I got some stuff to show you. Now, I just need to figure out where exactly I hold my UI and stuff. Now, uh, first of all, we do, of course, have the tournament itself. So, I mentioned yesterday that I wanted to break the pre-game lobby screen away from... Um, the idea of just like waiting around for the next round of a tournament. I believe you would have like a proper show would have a scene representing the tournament in general. Now, normally that would involve brackets and stuff, but since the devs haven't exposed any API functionality for the community to be able to play with that, we, we can't really do brackets, but we'll find some meaningful stuff for that screen. Um, but yeah, so I believe that you would have that. And uh, that's what I've got here for you all. So if you check this out, um, this would be the tournament lobby right here. Um, so as you guys can see, it's Grent's game that we have live, uh, on Sunday, the 8th of April at quarter past three. It's currently 10 past three right now. And, um, be aware we may be spectated. The prizes are die, mystic coins, 25 gold, 50 qualifying points, very comfortably, big and easy. And then you've got all of your other rewards down here. Um, yesterday we did, of course, see a Grant's game went through. It's not saving for some reason. Oh, it's removed the match history. Damn it, Arena Net, don't do that. Ah. Oh. So yesterday we saw Blitzkrieg won ga Grant's game. I wanted to be able to show this off to you all because um, uh, that's a cool thing to like compare, like who's winning the Grant's games more frequently or whatever. But I think that what what's actually happened is they've cleared match history to get ready for the ongoing tournament. So we can work around that. We just have to like take a screenshot at the end of one stream to save for the next. So we can do that. It's annoying though. Arena Net, you've done something annoying there. You should save match history up until the last second, not up until a moment. But anyway, and then you've got live matches we'll be watching very soon. So that's the Grenz game. There are obviously other tournaments that go on. In five hours, we have Melanji's matchup. In uh, 10 hours, is Lissa's Legions. In 16, it's Balthazar's Brawl. And then we come back to Grenz's game in 24. And then Cormier's Clash is in two weeks. Look at the rewards for Cormier's Clash. So yeah, you got that. So all the overlay work I've really done. Um, if you guys want to sign up for the tourney, please, please do. All the overlay work that I've done, you'll actually notice, um, <laughs> is on the top left and the top right of this screen. So 
I did some research on my own and then I got some help from Shaman, who's like a genius in basically every arena. I have no idea how he knows so much. Um, and he's always on tap to just like, you can message him and he'll help you out with so many things. So what you will notice on the top left, what is that chat? Tell me chat, what is that on the top left? Also, hello to everyone. Also, chat should be on screen here. I don't know whether it's been seen, but you should be able to see chat in the middle. Yeah, yeah, it is there. There you go. Look, hello newcomers says, uh, da, 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 da. what is that on the top left, guys? Come on, someone. Come on, guys. Don't want to do Twitch if we're not chatting. Here we go. What is it? What's on the top left? <laughs> we're going to keep obnoxiously clapping. There you go. An amulet. Badass. Yes. It's all the amulets. They're all the PvP amulets. And they look pretty cool, don't they? So that's actually des uh, destroyers you're looking at there. I think that's sages there. Um, and it will keep scrolling through them. Now, what what's cool about that is the only thing we have... There you go. That's a uh, uh, carry. I just can't remember. What's cool about this, okay, is the only amulets that we actually have as a community are tiny little 48 by 48 pixel things. They're, they're gross. They're tiny. 48 by 48, guys. And yet, look at this. Look at the detail on this bad boy. Look at that. Mwah! Oh, beautiful. And so, what, uh, basically, that this is what I was working on, okay? I, uh, used waifu x2 upscaler which you remember i did the guild wars one well i didn't do i hosted what did i do that i can't remember i did some other trailers anyway listen we did the um guild wars one trailer upscale yeah no i i had the guy showed me the process for how to do it um and he made that made it and then i hosted it uh but yeah so we use the upscaler but then it looks really cartoony and shit so then afterwards we go into photoshop and we add a little bit of that painterly noise and that's what uh shaman helped me with there so now you get like really nice cool looking um large image I image sizes of the amulets i don't know whether i'll actually use the amulets on this lobby here and then on the top right what's that on the top right guys i haven't added the noise on that so it looks much more cartoony we'll fix that later what are, what are, what is on the top right of this screen I'll let you guys wonder about that, but uh, the tournament is going to be starting in just three minutes, so that seems like a perfect opportunity for me to now go to the tournament intro. I'll see you all in just a second.
Alright, I'm back. Hello. I literally just made some coffee. We've got one minute, guys. Starts in 48 seconds. Woo! It's gonna be pretty good. We're starting it out. Uh, let's see if they've actually got the matchups done yet. They haven't just yet. Alright, guys. Keep guessing. What is that on the top right? It's, it's so pathetic and, like, sad that you guys don't know the answer to this. And I don't mean you're pathetic and you're sad. I mean the state of the game, the environment of the culture around the game. It is actually pathetic that, that no one in chat knows. Even just from a little moment that no one knows what they are. Some kind of concept art? No. Yeah, there was a, there was a Halloween-y looking one. You're absolutely right. It's pathetic. Come on. There's a ship. There's a crown. Come on, guys. What is the question? What do the top right icons represent? That's what the question is. Okay, the games should be about to go live in a second. We're watching the uh, menu. And there they are. So, hold on. Let me turn camera shake off. I was experimenting with that and I've just realized I hate it. Uh, enable camera shake. Okay. Um, so, who do we want to watch? Oh, no, no, no. Lots of teams here. So, at the top we can see Grant's game uh, is already in... How is it already in semi-finals? What the fuck? Why does it mean Grent's game is already in semi-finals? This UI is terrible, we're in it. Fix it. What is this? Toe Necro in Badland team. Ronald McDonald is back. Let's watch Ronald McDonald again. I want to watch Ronald McDonald again. All right, so we'll have a look at that later, guys. Let's have a look very quickly now at the pre-game and uh, post-game lobby. Let's see what we've got going on here. Um... I've just remembered that I didn't set a thing up. I don't have the bars on, so good, great work here. We've got to go very quickly because this is still not fully updated yet. Set screenshot hotkey, F2. Okay, so let's see very quickly. What are we uh, looking at? We've got Ronald McDonald on red. They've got Why You Gank Me, Let Me Stun You, Miss Eva Lovia, Layla Everdeen, and Lucifer Drake. Let's uh, examine what their composition is for today, shall we? Uh, looking, first of all, over here. At why you gank me who is running um, hollow and we'll just keep him in the pressure section that's perfectly fine moving over we got their warrior who uh, is duelist he'll probably be picking up close that's perfectly fine we have uh, a general pressuring mesmer on their team as well in the damage slot they are they running the same comp as yesterday um, they've got a um, core guard on great sword by the way this is a great sword core guard that you can see here and uh, so you've got that and then last of all, their final player has just left but was a thief. We'll see what they re-roll to. But as a thief, obviously, they're going to be in the roaming position here. Uh, we'll see what they load back in on. They're actually on a character called AFK now QQ. And uh, with that, guys, I think that we should be ready to see them go out of the gates here. Um, the stream's just going to be held for a second here. All right, let's get on in. Watching the opening splits. We're watching their core guards from Ronald McDonald on the red team. Heading on out against the Pig Iron Puddlers, whose composition we don't quite know yet because we didn't have time to look because I uh, sort of messed some stuff up. But that's fine. It's fine. Come on, Ro come on, Ronald McDonald. I want you to win so that I have less work to do on the next bracket. He judges interventions in, does plenty of damage to his opposing core guards, who doesn't really seem to take much pressure. By the way, we do have Duelist Mesmer picking up close and um, a Guardian on the red, t on the blue team as well for the Pig Iron Puddlers. Uh, picking up there close. Mid fight going very well for Ronald McDonald right now. Huge pressure and cleave going over that body. They did get the res off on the Pig Iron Puddler's side, but Ronald McDonald uh, managing to do enough work that I think it's blown a ton of their cooldowns. Uh, we have a rally race in progress. The core guard that we're watching has gone down and the Pig Iron Puddler core guard went down. Uh, Ronald McDonald just about win the rally race there, so excellently done. But some of their guys are still very low. Let's watch the Ronald McDonald Roma here as he tries to unload some damage. He's running PP thing. I think he re-rolled from SD to PP. He goes down. Isn't quite team fighting very well. This is extremely close rally race again here. We're watching this Hollow go for the stealth stomp. He gets the block in stealth with Aegis, I think, through converting burn. Unbelievable. And that actually secures the stomp and wins Ronald McDonald another rally race. This is honestly such an evenly matched team fight here. Watching uh, the PP Thief as well, doing a little bit of work here. And uh, I think Ronald McDonald will be taking that mid fight. They currently outnumber two to uh, but their plus two. Looking back at Ronald McDonald's close, they are still back noding with their chrono who uh, potentially had to port back through, it looks like. They were probably contributing to the mid-fight for a while. Uh, now they're here. Sorry, guys, let me actually give you game audio. How about you uh, enjoy that? Oh, my God, that was really loud. Hold on. We don't want it too loud, though. Sorry, everyone. L listen, once we get out of practice stage, it's going to be amazing. But for as long as I'm practicing, it's not. <laughs> All right, so... Uh, 
Chrono does very well, manages to push the pig iron puddlers player uh, away just for a moment. Looks like he's actually on axe, is he? I'm not sure. We didn't obviously get to see their builds very much, very well. And that just means Ronald McDonald really just need to secure the mid fight again, and they'll be fine. They did send their PP thief all the way to their enemy spawn. Sorry about the camera blink there, but yeah, we are over actually at pig iron puddlers home right now. Uh, with the uh, Ronald McDonald Roma scoring a decap, even trying to take a fight until he gets plussed, bailing out. Uh, Pig Iron Puddler's making a very questionable play, letting him just bail there and sending two people to cap an empty node. But uh, hey, Ronald McDonald also losing in the team fight a little bit here. Why you ganked me extremely low, trying to bail out. This was the guy who got the clutch uh, stomp a second ago. He drops his Elixir U behind him. Would have been nice if he actually hollow looped in that to give him a bit of stealth to peel out. None of his allies are watching to give him that defense from the enemy Scourge. But walking all the way over to spawn, he actually does essentially get um, zone potential from Layla here. Uh, so let's watch as they... Oh, uh, so sorry. So they have a secured mid now. Uh, continuing with the hollow who just peeled out to resustain. Oh, no, never mind. Now he's back here again as well. God, it's so easy to miss their movements. Um, I thought the hollow was going to plus this fight for Ronald McDonald's close. Uh, that would have been really strong. Uh, but I guess that they're comfortable actually that their chrono here will beat the core guard matchup wise their chrono absolutely will So Ronald McDonald doing fine there bell has just triggered So this is the first big swing potential moment for the pig iron puddlers if they could win the bell But instead they just get zerg down 3v1 and um, They basically lose that straight away. They could get someone on to delay the cap They decide not to go for that instead there um, the pig iron puddler hollow is moving over to Ronald McDonald's close to see whether he can save his core guard that is currently losing and uh, on that note, since Pig Iron Puddlers are so behind, let's start watching their perspective and see how they can get back into the game. That's the sound of Ronald McDonald skewering the bell over there. Uh, and now they've got this Hollow build versus the Chrono. I do think that the Chrono build is generally a lot stronger in the meta right now, as most Mesmer builds are. Uh, this Hollow really is going to be looking for a plus from any of his allies. But if we actually look at the Pig Iron Puddlers, the blue team's comp, they don't have anyone who rotates that fast. Um, they don't really have anyone in a formal roaming capacity and uh, for that I think they're gonna struggle like for example here We're actually now seeing that he's getting plus instead of uh, he's he's being 2v1 instead of getting the 2v the 1v2 if you go I mean He's, bit, he's 1v2ing instead of 2 v one -ing. So one plus comes in. He manages to sustain it well enough for one of his allies to get over onto the node This here is super cute lover boy the core guard returning Actually, not the same core guard, a different core guard. The 2v2 uh, becomes a 3v2. The hollow is pushed off. Unfortunately, Super Cute doesn't do anything to save his friend. He's just tunnel visioning the node. Amazingly, I think a huge mistake here. Ronald McDonald go for the rot value. They respect Super Cute's awareness so little that they just try to rot it. They're punished in another way as well because Primordial T, we can see the Pig Iron Puddler Blue uh, 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 Druid actually manages to secure that res with a search and rescue. And uh, bails out. This is actually excellent. That punish is huge there. That's a really nice moment for Pig Iron Puddlers because now they secure this node with the outnumber. They should get the rot value. They they do, so that's brilliant. We're now looking at uh, whether Pig Iron Puddlers can save their Scourge, who is currently downstate in the mid fight. It's not going to be easy for them. Uh, but let's see how they do. The uh, Druid is trying to keep uh, as much pressure over the body as possible. The Scourge does go down. At kind of a perfect time though, as you can see this um, for the pig iron puddlers, they do have some good targets here. The PP thief is super low off node. They also have a very low spell breaker they can go for. Uh, the druid has to try and get away to resustain with CA but gets hammered a little bit too hard. Very close engagements, honestly guys, uh, where pig iron puddlers could have come through these. Um, and they just quite don't get it. I think a little bit more awareness of how to target down this uh, pistol pistol enemy of theirs. Uh, would be pretty good. Here we got a pretty ugly stagger coming in too. This res. This like 1% res. He's actually going for it. It is a druid so he'll be able to get his own pet to help him out on that. I think he got plucked as well by a blood magic necro res. Yes, this is a blood res. Amazing ghastly breach goes down on the node. We're going to see pig iron puddlers actually swing this fight. Look at this crazy damage. Oh my god. So pig iron puddlers do get that but this is very, very, very behind. Bell is up and by committing so heavily to that... They almost missed the bell. Super cute lover boy getting into the last second. He's actually going to do okay versus PP. He gets the huge burst if he can get a great value out of his Litany of Wrath. He can get this PP off. Um, the Pistol Pistol uh, Ronald McDonald Thief uh, is actually not in a good position here. He needs to sustain through mobility, which means he gets off of the node, which means that they lose that valuable bell cap value that they had a second ago. So do we see 
The uh, Pig Iron Puddlers take a mid-fight and then the bell. We actually might. Meanwhile, they are engaging Ronald McDonald in 1v1s on sides. And extremely importantly, they've got these sides Newt as well. So they've got their Druid on far. This is excellent. That's a very powerful 1v1 build. And all the way over at the Pig Iron Puddlers close point. So there you go. Pig Iron Puddlers did take the bell. That's fine. Over there close, they have lost it. But the guys that won the bell can now just rotate in. And that's exactly what we see here. Devastating Scourge, his Ghastly Breach almost coming back up. Look at how low that Elite cooldown is. Only 72 seconds. And so with that, they resecure this. Pretty ugly, to be honest. I think the Scourge should be pushing up while the Hollow is the guy that stays uh, on the note here. Uh, really, the Scourge would be able to swing this mid-fight engagement much stronger. Uh, Pig Iron Puddler's doing quite well at this as well, though. We haven't been watching that it as it's been in progress, but they caught, scored a single stomp. This is very volatile. They're both so low. He went for the greed play, and I mean... Uh, some respect to the attempt, I guess. But yeah, the PP thief from Ronald McDonald is just going to turn around and punch him in the face. Nonetheless, even with this stomp going through, um, we have Pig Iron Puddlers in such a powerful position here to pluck these kills off. This is all great zoning potential to keep that node in their favor here. The 1v1 on far is still in progress with um, Pig Iron Puddlers not doing too well in it necessarily, but sustaining it neutral, which is all that actually really matters. Sticking with the mid fight for a second here. They do uh, score a down state, sorry. Uh, a little bit crazy here. If we see the Pig Iron Puddlers manage to get this up, it'll be huge. The Blood Res is coming in. Transfuse lands uh, to pluck the body. He goes for a bit of a, a res capacity. And he sustains it long enough for the stomp to go through on Layla Everdeen of the pit of um, Ronald McDonald. And that means Pig Iron Puddlers will probably take this as well. There's their second kill. That's two more kills in mid. Let's see whether um, Super Cute Lover Boy here... The core guard can get this chrono down before he resustains. The chrono double portals. This is so bad. The double portal. If he'd used it more intelligently, he could have used it to get away. But he gets major punish for that double portal play. The 1v1 is finally over, by the way, on far. Bell is about to go live, I believe. And uh, so they have lost sides here from committing very heavily to that mid. But just to take your attention to the timeline here, look at this squeeze. This is beautiful. Okay, this is genuinely beautiful. Unfortunately, we've got a terrible matchup for the Pig Iron Puddlers here, though. It is their Scourge versus a PP Thief. And PP Thieves eat Scourges for breakfast. One of the only reasons that PP Thief exists right now is to eat Scourges for breakfast, especially unsupported ones. But he's not unsupported. Super cute lover boy in brilliant positioning there to offer pills for his Scourge. Uh, they keep the p Pistol Pistol Thief away. And they look to invest in Bell. We're going to be seeing a pretty tricky situation coming for the Pig Iron Puddler's Avatar Druid here. As uh, he gets plus by that same Pistol Pistol Thief. Actually, he's not even going for the plus. Amazing. I think that was a huge misplay. Um, but mind you, maybe he's just going to contest Bell. Look at the health bars here. Look at how the Pig Iron Puddlers have actually started winning a lot of these fights. Uh, taking the attention to the Hollow, who's the most bruisery, sustainy guy. It's his job to get this pressure off of his Core Guard. The Core Guard goes down. There's the Elixir S Auto Proc. He probably should bail here or at least climb on the boxes or something. They're all so low. This bell is extremely important for Pig Iron Puddlers to finally see themselves in a winning position, not just a catch-up position. Let's see whether they can sustain it. Their Scourge gets on the node, drops the Ghastly Breach, get, forces them all off. If any of Ronald McDonald get on the node now, they're going to be absolutely devastated. Another big Blood Res trying to come through. He doesn't quite land it. Is he actually running well of blood on pressing F? I think he might not be running that trait. You might see that Pig Iron Puddlers lose this game based on a single missed trait selection. Let's see. No, he is running Lesser Will of Blood. We just haven't managed to catch it in any of our spectators. Okay, so that's fine. So here we see actually Ronald McDonald expertly taking that bell fight and getting this sexy ass neutralization on the back of it. That means that uh, Pig Iron Puddler, uh, uh, sorry, Ronald McDonald. Once again, are actually in the much more superior position in this game. They do outnumber at Bell, so we're not going to see Super Cute be able to really do anything against this. He can sustain for a short while, but that's not the build. That it's not how his build is. Excellent rotation here as well from the Ronald McDonald Thief. Scores the decap, comes straight back to Bell to swing it. It's exactly what I like to see. And we don't actually see the Pig Iron Puddlers with any node anymore. Meanwhile, um, I guess that this guy might have scored a kill 2v1, but he is down. Can the Blood Res come? Here's the Transfusion Pluck. The Well of Blood. Ah, he got knocked out of the Well of Blood. So excellent uh, launch play there to launch out of that Well of Blood. I think a lot of people really need to start looking at that counterplay more uh, in current metas where Blood does dominate so much of what we see. Um, so we're now looking at Ronald McDonald right near the end of the game. They flipped mid. All Ronald McDonald has to do is bunk this mid node and they will be going through to the next round. Let's see if the Pig Iron Puddlers can do anything to get them off. It seems like the only person in a position to try right now is Super Cute Lover Boy, who's just been 4v1 essentially down in the face. The Prime Light Beam comes over. Do we see a stomp come through? 
We don't. Uh, obviously, we don't. And with that f extra five points, congratulations to Ronald McDonald, who were given a run for their money there in the middle. They were genuinely uh, a little bit pressured. But uh, they played very well at this last bell. I really think a lot of it can come down to that PP Thief play from the Fate 4253. And um, yeah, we see uh, round one goes for Ronald McDonald, who on yesterday's Grenz game also managed to pull something similar off. So uh, let's quickly go back to the post game lobby now. Because I want to take a look at the blue team players. <clears throat> and I want to see exactly what it was that they were running here. So, um, let's just wait till we get out of our loading screen. Oh god, I'm, I'm accidentally fighting an NPC right now. Uh, how can I get their... Their hotkeys aren't working for some reason. I don't know why. There we go. Oh, I had an unlock on or off or whatever. Okay, so, what we're actually looking at here, okay... On um, their opposing team. So this is the Pig Iron Puddlers team that we were watching a second ago. Um, what were we watching? We were watching Super Cute Loverboy um, in a core guard position. And he was actually backed up by another core guard, right? Then we they had big pressure at the team fight as well from their Scourge. They had uh, a Druid to pick up their close. And then finally, uh, this guy, Ryan. What was Ryan on? I can't remember. Was he team fighting as well? I actually can't remember what this last build was. He must have swapped right when we took the screenshot. So not entirely sure there. But actually fairly, if he was in a roaming position. Oh, no, he was a hollow, right? Yeah, so what we're actually seeing here, I think, guys, very easy to read. Uh, as I mentioned, that PP Thief, AFK now QQ, this guy over here. I think we saw, because he was uncontested in that roaming slot, he could just rotate around. And you actually saw the game-winning play, I think, was him swinging a great plus at Bell, taking a neutralization, returning to Bell to finish it off. Him doing that through his mobility... And the uh, blue team being unable, the pig iron pud has been uh, unable to respond in any way. I think that is why you actually saw Ronald McDonald win that in the end. Because in terms of skill, I think it was actually fairly evenly matched for all of them. Um, so yeah, uh, the, basically the pig iron pudders were just a little bit too loaded on their team fight. If you're going to load this heavy on damage and pressure, at least run one of them as a firebrand. So you're guaranteeing the win of all these big engagements, right? At least do something like that. But they didn't quite do that. And I think that might be why we saw... Um, that the round went as it uh, as it actually did there. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, that's the first round. Let's see where Ronald McDonald appear next. It looks like they're not actually queuing in just yet. Uh, oh no, they are. They are. They're here. Uh, they've started Kylo already. Shit, they've already started Kylo. All right, so we will see exactly how this goes. <clears throat> so the Kylo game. Uh, Ronald McDonald once again returning on red. I don't think that they changed their composition in any way. Uh, let's have a look at the uh, lobby <clears throat> and uh, just confirm that here. So uh, some of their characters have swapped. So they've got their Roma. They've got their damage here. They've got their Duelist Mesmer. They have, just to remind ourselves as well here, this is Layla Everdeen on the Hammer Core Guard. Okay, so that's their composition. Meanwhile, looking over at the blue team, the Cold Foamers here on round two. Uh, we're starting off with a Scourge. The Scourge is running um, Sages on uh, Blood. So we do have a Blood Scourge. He's in a correct position. They're actually fielding an Elementalist as well. I can't wait to see the Ellie. They've got their Duelist Mesmer. So probably going to be picking up close. They also have a Duelist Warrior who could be pushing far. I think we'd see that. I, 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 I don't know. The Portal Back node is weaker to me than Portal Aggressive. Uh, but yeah, they also have a hollow for the team fight. And looking finally at this elementalist build, the Ellie is actually on sword. Okay, so I don't really know how to classify this just yet. Oh, sorry, I've totally messed up the build window here. Uh, the Ellie's on sword, but we'll have it like that. So that's the matchups. Very even again. We're still seeing one team slightly more roam heavy than the other. Let's get into the opening splits. We're going to be watching Ronald McDonald as they open up the. Um, Red team, of course, sending their Mesmer to close. Yeah, look, they, they, both teams have back-noding portal Mesmers. Uh, and we're looking at the 4v4 in mid. Let's just keep an eye on the big minimap just for a second to see if there's any kind of crazy crosses. Uh, Ronald McDonald doing good blast stealths on the opening. It doesn't look like there's going to be any crosses at all. What is the blue Mesmer doing right now? Cold Foam is making a huge mistake not getting their node for full. Oh, I see what he's doing. The Cold Foam and Mesmer on the other side of the map saw the, the uh, stealth blast and got scared off the node a little bit. So actually, pretty good play. Um... And now we see such a huge crunch. This is actually insane. Look at this team fight. What the hell is this? Massive explosions here. Downstates on both sides. 
That was literally 4v4, all on the node. No taken to the sides or anything. Ronald Mc... There's a double rally race going on right now. There's tons of downstate players. Uh, Ronald McDonald still... It's still in progress. Do they get Master Strike down? Ronald McDonald losing the rally race there, coming out with two defeats. Uh, while the cold foam is just barely hang on that is one of the that is the most explosive mid fight that I have seen uh, Since I've been practicing this what the hell so um Ronald McDonald losing the mids in seconds as both teams full-on nuke each other inside ghastly breaches and whatnot One Ronald McDonald player manages to bail out very good play here. He's on a core guard um, He doesn't quite get the neutralization in time he gets his plus from his respawning pistol, pistol thief. So let's see if they can hammer that ne uh, that uh, enemy mesmer down. It looks like it's a two v two for now, but uh, cold foamers playing very defensively here. They're uh, sending another rotation by way of their elementalist into this fight. It doesn't look good for Ronald McDonald if they're going to go for this two v two right now or two v three. Let's see if they can bail. It's definitely the job of this PP thief. To get the hell out if he's getting pressure too hard. They managed to score a kill. 2v3. That is huge. The shadow step is not available for some kind of proper cheeky stomp. I don't know why he's going up there. He's got so much pressure on him. Layla notices the opportunity. Um, sorry, sorry, sorry. Layla here notices the opportunity. He's going for the cleave. He misses another great on three. No, so he's not going to get the cleave. Look at all the downstate Ronald McDonald players right now. We've got AFK. Oh, my God. So, once again, very close. Ronald McDonald only just losing that. Here as well, you saw they had a 1v1 in progress with Let Me Stun You, who is actually being rotted on node by this Scourge, who is happy to sit here because he knows his team's just one close. So, Cold Famer's having a very, very good opening, but it's not like they won it steadily and sturdily. Um... Kind of a ridiculous open, to be honest. Uh, moving back over to Ronald McDonald's close point. They are in the middle of a 1v1 that they just got neutralized in um, because their mes their Chronomancer was forced to distort. Of course, Ronald McDonald losing a lot of momentum on the map, so you can actually see the Cold Foam is pressing right up now. Looking at the mini-map, you can see that slowly they're on a direction towards the Ronald McDonald spawn. And uh, looking at the health bars as well, you can see everyone in an active engagement for Ronald McDonald's is currently very low. It does look like Ronald McDonald will lose this fight on their close. The portal is not used in any meaningful way again. Did we not see that last time? So they're uh, Mesmer, very unlikely to get out. That was pretty cool. I don't know whether that was a real mind games there or attempted mind games, but he managed to do that. I think he's just going to lose this, though. He really needs to be on kite mode. Uh, meanwhile, let's look to the rest of the map. We have Ronald McDonald looking like they've got their heads chopped off a little bit here. Their cord guard also walking into a 1v2, which means that really we have to see Ronald McDonald make something over here where at least they, they are the ones that outnumber. And it, indeed, they do. I don't think that we're seeing their Roma get off quick enough here. As soon as that downstate landed, they needed to bail and stop pressuring. Maybe he could have come to mid and actually saved that. We'll see if he gets a cheeky decap. He might not, but his matchup right now is against the enemy Scourge, and he's sort of favoured here, so hopefully he lands it. He goes for the decap. This is going to force the Scourge onto the node. Oh, he uses the Sand Swell. Much respect there. I hope he goes back through the Sand Swell now as well. I'd really enjoy that. He is! He's going back through it! No, go back through it, man. Come on, entertain us. Damn it. If he'd gone back through, he would have had line of sight again on the PP Thief. That would have been so good. I guess he didn't realise that that's a possibility. Um... But so, yeah, the Roma really... What we're watching here, right? This Roma can't do anything because his team's not creating any opportunities for him. Wherever he rotates, he's either outnumbered or his allies are already dead. Let's look at Ronald McDonald as they're on the respawn. Okay, so they've got two players looking at the core guard as he moves on through. Um... So, yeah, this is good, right? Like, we've got Ronald McDonald going for a big outnumber on their close point. They're hoping to win this, and then they'll push back towards uh, mid. The reason they're at this luxury to be able to take this big out number is because they do have a little bit of harass from uh, another player over here. Let me stun you. Actually doing extremely well. Outnumbered. Surviving. Going to uh, mid to position himself for when his team crunches into it. And we're going to see another big team fight at mid come through now. It depends if their Roma can actually get away perfectly fine. It looks like he will. He's already got the combat break. He should be moving back in now. At least I would assume he got combat break. Yeah, he did. Uh, and yeah, so we're going to watch a big team fight. Let's watch it from Layla's perspective. Ronald McDonald basically has to win this to stay in the game. If they lose this and map control again, I think they're pretty much down and out with such a big gap, uh, a gulf widening between them. And it looks like they did get crunched. They, they were slightly more staggered than Cold Foamers. I think we've seen Cold Foamers play a very nice defensive, steady, sturdy game here. And look, this is actually a repeat of the start, right? Uh, Ronald McDonald, the red team, they lose the mid-fight, their Roma gets out, scores a decap, and now is basically just going to be caught here for ages until his team is uh, fully on respawn. 
They get their warrior onto the node. This is exactly where he wants to be, realistically. He eats the full churning earth. Ouch! Um, and he's forced away. So that still means Cold Foam is going to have their close. They're going to have mids. And they've even managed to score neutralization over on their enemy's spawn uh, from some aggressive play with their own Mesmer. Um, if he'd ported that as he left, that would have been even more gross. So, uh, Ronald McDonald's, they probably, okay, listen, if we're talking really high tier, tier play, it's not actually over. Um, in theory, a re if, if Ronald McDonald was suddenly being controlled by the best players in the game, they could come through and they could actually trip cap and win. So, there is enough space for that. Uh, it looks like this time, based on the movement of this core guard, they no longer have any confidence in the mid fight. They could have confidence in the mid fight, I genuinely believe that, they were so close to winning the previous, the first one. Um... So they go for the push on far. Obviously, the danger of going for the push on far is you just get hit on the road so much by the time the fight uh, manifests, you don't get much. Nice little, actually, the aggression there, baiting all of the cold foamers onto the road, enabled uh, a cheeky decap to come through, making this a higher value. Look at that great sword damage, so good. Uh, making this a higher value team fight now because at least it's over a neutral node, but they cannot lose it. And Layla with the great sword getting on the node like that, just being immediately blown up. We're seeing the punishment there come through. If your kill doesn't manifest when you burst someone on a core guard, you'd best goddamn hope you can get away alive. We saw neither of those manifest here. In the middle of the team fight, the cold foamers go once again for an aggressive decap. In theory, um, Ronald McDonald could port back. They do. Good awareness there. He got that after just one tick. That's going to be a tricky mid fight for the uh, Ronald McDonald Mes uh, 1v1. Sorry for the Ronald McDonald uh, Mesmer since he's just been engaged in a mid fight already. And of course, him being pulled out is good in that they kept their node. It's bad in that now they, where's their number value in mid, right? They lost their core guard. They've lost their Mesmer. And that means that everyone else is being forced off. So that's exactly what you're watching now. Ronald McDonald pushing across the roads, trying to see whether they can just get something somewhere else. Another decap might actually land here. Beautiful shockwave there. Yeah, he does. He gets the neutralization. That's excellent. He's actually against a Condi Engineer, guys. We're going to be watching a Condi NG uh, go through on the next round with the Cold Foamers. Uh, but with that loss there, the defensive two cap will hold, I believe. They're giving it up a lot. To be honest with you, Cold Foamers aren't playing very well in terms of like leaving a Scourge at a point or something. Or uh, a Hollow at a point, just so that they can... Um... Actually, they're Ellie. They should leave their... Like, their Ellie should probably just sit on one of these. Or watch them a little bit. Not sit, sit on it, but watch it a bit more aggressively. Uh, he gets ghastly breached. Let me stun you. Or Ronald McDonald getting ghastly breached. The BM, the overkill. Uh, well, 3v1. And with the five points there, we see the cold foamers take the win. And they'll be going through to the next round. <clears throat> Looking back at the uh, lobby here. <clears throat> I mean, yeah, there's, there's, there's nothing really to say. Okay, there is something actually to say here. The thing to say here is that what we're actually noticing is the roaming potential from that PP thief didn't manifest in any way on this. Uh, we at what we actually saw was having that PP thief instead of the Mesmer perhaps has meant that um, Ronald McDonald didn't lose. There were basically three big mid crunches on that game and Ronald McDonald never managed to win any of them. Um, and it could be because they had that sub. <clears throat> yeah, Weaver is definitely, I would put it as a side noder more than anything else. We didn't see it playing in the side node role though because already they had, they had these two builds. You could maybe say that they were playing like this, but we obviously saw on close. They had their Mez port, right? They had their chrono. This was a back noding chrono. 100% this was back node chrono. The warrior didn't really push far very much. It was more mid fighting, if anything, actually, to be honest, because they played just a two cap game. But uh, still, I think that that's uh, that's pretty evident what was going on there. Uh, and yeah, so there you go. Um, let's keep an eye on what's going on here. The tournament continues to collapse down. We're going to be watching the cold foamers. Which cold foamer is it though? The RNG has had three sets of cold foamers load in here. I'm guessing it's the one at the top, because um, well, we can verify that, right? Actually, neither of these games are live. It's going to be one of these. I don't know which one, though. Uh, if you guys know the account names. This sucks, ArenaNet. Please, do character names, not account names or something. Actually, let's just look. Can we look at the lobby? Side of Madness. Phoenix. Master Strike. Vengst. Yeah, I don't think there's any way to tell, is there? I don't think there's any way to tell. All right, well... So we'll just wait and see. 
Uh, they'll be basically in semis, I believe, uh, as we go forward here. Um, so yeah. <clears throat> you just heard a super monkey? Yeah, yeah, actually, I should probably, um, turn my minis off, right, if I'm casting, because there's added sound effects. In fact, on this screen, I kind of want to disable desktop audio altogether, which I might do. This game's actually in progress. This is not the game I wanted to watch, just by the way, so I didn't really want to click this. Because uh, Cold Foamers are not actually live in this one. This is Toil and Trouble versus Ranger Danger, so... Oh, you guys can't even see it. What do you guys think of the, 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 the next implementation of the overlays, by the way? Um, right, Cold Foamers... Cold Foamers... Alright, we're just gonna watch this... We're gonna watch this Cold Foamers setup. Now, I do have another thing. I need a second account that can, uh, that has partner access, I really do. If I have a second account that has partner access, at this moment, during the stream, I can do something very cool, okay? And I'll just show you. Ready? Are you guys ready for this? The very cool thing? Um, yeah, check it out. Ooh. Instant replays, guys. Ooh. I can actually do instant replays. I might set up a, a, a proper thing. So here's an instant replay. It slow mos it. It does everything, yeah? So during the game, I can take an instant replay. It will be a 10-second clip each time. And, um, we, yeah, we can, uh, we can basically watch any big moment. So at any point during the cast, if I just press F4 on my keyboard... I'll get an instant replay that we can use to watch when there's downtime between the queues. How good is that? Um, and I had to set up quite a few different preferences and things in um, uh, VLC. But the problem is I only get one cursor. And my cursor has to be here clicking this constantly. So unless I can pure hotkey navigating through windows, finding the right file, clicking it, uh, go, it it's just mental. I want, I want my cursor to be able to do stuff. But I can't have my cursor doing stuff because I have to be spam clicking. So instead, if I have a second account that has partner access, I can just have my laptop on the right spamming it to figure out when, the, when it goes live. Am I using Overwolf for the replays? No, I'm doing it purely through OBS. Do you guys wanna? Do you guys wanna actually see what that feels like? Actually, I'll give it a shot. Okay, we'll we'll test this out. Oh, here we go. So uh, we are live. Let's see uh, what we're looking at on this one. It's gonna be the cold foamers, ver the blue cold foamers versus the red cold foamers. So throughout this t this game, guys, I'm probably just gonna say red and blue. Okay, uh, because it's irrelevant otherwise. But we have two flavors. Of mugs of ale and grog. It's gonna be good. Look at that sage's amulet on the top left right now. Look at how good that looks, by the way. Look at how good that looks. That was a 48 by 48 fucking pixel resolution. Look at how good that looks. Oh, that's my favorite one. That's my favorite icon. Anyway, let's go to the lobby and let's see uh, what the matchups are looking like here. <clears throat> First of all, uh, wait, which which cold foamers was it we were familiar with before? I don't even know whether either of these teams were the cold foamers we were familiar with before because there's three teams. It could be our cold foamers are on that other queue. I mean, I really don't know. Uh, let's just quickly go through those. So we've got uh, a warrior. He's on axe with the bull's rush. I'll still put him as a duelist though. Actually, he's core warrior. He's core warrior, guys. Um, just looking at his uh, traits here. This is a core warrior build. So I'm actually going to just have that as straight up damage. We're going to be looking at a revenant as well. I'll put him more in a rotation -y spot for now. Um, because I don't see anyone else. They've got more pressure from their hollow here. This is stack discharge, by the way, I think. Uh, actually, he's on sword as well. That's pretty interesting. Um, they have their uh, high damage scourge. And finally, they have an actual Spellbreaker uh, Warrior over here. So, pretty interesting composition here from the red team. That's all we've got time to look at for now, guys. Because I was a bit slow. Uh, but yeah, so there you have it. That's what uh, they're fielding. Reasonably well balanced. No formal support. We're seeing very few teams running a formal support at the moment. Uh, let's watch the opening splits. They have their Spellbreaker. Uh, pick oh, no, they have their Core Warrior picking up close with the Spellbreaker going mid. Kind of interesting. Meanwhile, over on the blue team, they have their Chrono picking up close, obviously, uh, with the portal there. So, uh, Scourge immediately comes up to the side of the node so he can get lots of damage unharassed. Uh, the blue team drop their Ghastly Breach very fast on the node and it does nothing for them. Uh, in fact, basically, the blue Scourge just getting dominated and getting no support from his allies. Um, 
In fact, blue getting destroyed here. Blue being hit so hard. Blue was dealing a lot of pressure around on the side, but red has just absolutely uh, taken this team fight with three kills already. Super, super, super quick. Let's watch the rev now as he rotates off of mid and actually works for the very quick cross. So, um, yes, the blue team managed to lose mid fight pretty spectacularly there, but the, the blue Mesmer that picked up close has actually got full side cap and it's got a kill. But let's see if the Rev Plus gets in and manifests anything. It doesn't because of the distortion stomp. A good death strike would be pretty goddamn nice right now. Does the Rev land it properly? He doesn't. Now that the Rev is in actually a 1v1, this is suddenly really bad for the red team. Uh, chaotic release is even uh, evaded and the uh, plus comes in from blue. So this red Rev really isn't going to accomplish anything in this fight as far as I can see because he's 2v1. Uh... He's just waiting for assistance to come in. He's getting it in, t in this form of this hollow who uh, pushes through. Finally, we see that point B flips. Oh, what a gross decap in progress at point B. They didn't quite get it. Sorry, guys. Uh, this, that's not actually related to what we were looking at on the footage here. But uh, to look over here, this Scourge, Grok, okay, the red Scourge, he, they got full cap and then immediately he walked off and almost got fully decapped by his opposing red member there. Uh, which a uh, blue member, which was uh, kind of ridiculous. He's being pretty hard pressured right now. The torch skills are all done though, so LOS will be a thing. Does the well come on the node as well? There's actually incredible pressure th uh, from the red team going onto the node right now. Uh, but unfortunately, he's got an ally in downstate. It looks like red is very comfortably, uh, uh, very steadily starting to lose this now. They didn't really have any victories on sides. And now, they didn't even get many points out of their one mid fight. It took them a long time to fully flip the node. An instant decap afterwards. It's not looking very good, to be honest, guys. Meanwhile, over on this side of the map, we've actually seen a neutralization manage to come through, scored by the red revenants. Um, uh, we also see... Uh, sorry, hold on. Not the red. Yeah, I think he originally scored the decap. He does a swap with his spellbreaker who pushes that. And now the rev seeks to uh, swing this mid. It looks pretty good. We actually saw a kill come through for the red team over here on the note. The rev can continue pressuring this mesmer. Seems like he's fighting this mesmer an, awesome, an awful lot. Uh, blows a lot of his stuff uh, straight into a blurred frenzy. And uh, there we go. We actually see he finally gets the kill. Um, so that will be red on double cap now. Red on double cap because they're going to have mid and they've got their enemy spawn. This 1v1's in progress. Amazingly as well, Hammer just went live and we have a 1v1. So this is crazy, guys. There's actually four hot areas right now. We have a 1v1 over here on red spawn. Actually, a plus came through. So a 2v1. Red secures that. They have mid. They're in their 1v1 here as well and it looks like they're winning it. So it comes down to Hammer. If, if this guy can hold Hammer until he gets respawns in, this is amazing for, Rev, uh, for Red. Uh, he's forced into Elixir S. So no, the Hammer does flip for blue. Blue striking all three nodes at once here, neutralizing everything across the board. So just as Blue was starting to lose, uh, they managed to get a beautiful hammer there. That was extremely important. A portal from hammer there, by the way, I think. Straight over to keep this contested. So that's pretty good. Blue taking free cap mid. Nobody's over at point A anymore. Okay, so finally red invests there. So we'll find that the only node red owns is going to be their enemy's spawn. And it all comes down to this 2v2 that we're watching in progress here. Watching it from the Scourge's perspective as he kites around. Looks like he's managed to unload a reasonable amount of damage. They get the kill. The uh, Core Warrior did incredible damage there, by the way. Uh, am I seeing... Oh, no, no, no. I thought he was on Rifle for a second, but that's Static Discharge from their Hollow, actually, uh, elsewhere. So, uh, yeah, the 2v2 actually being won by Red. That means that Red will have sides as long as they can actually hold this. It looks like the guy that full capped here just bailed off immediately. Looking over at the mid-engagement, they've won that instead. So, we actually saw this Rev took far and then just left to help plus mid. So, he traded far for mid. That's actually a good trade in terms of node trades for the Red team. Um, we see he pushes forwards. Red team playing very aggressively here. It's an okay fight. Uh, if they score this downstate, this is definitely not a stomp that needs to happen. Don't farm that. Leave that to rot. That's pretty beautiful. They get decap here. Red now taking a very strong position across the map right now. Um, as they consistently hold their home, as they're consistently winning here, we see their Scourge manage to do that as he's going to be rotating back up through now. And we watch here as they fight once again for mids, uh, which got decapped pretty quick. This is the Spellbreaker, of, co uh, of course, which is the guy you really want to be sort of bruiser-like sustaining on that node. Sorry there, I misclicked. Scourge comes on in. The Winds of Disenchantment. Uh, Ghastly Breach combo could have been a thing, but obviously we see Ghastly Breach not there. Grok playing very conservatively here. Scared of a back cap here from Spooka2 on the blue team. 
Uh, he's running his torch abilities. Actually, I think he got a hell of a lot of Condi pressure off there. A load of Condi pressure. Wow, this Mirage doesn't know what hit him. And uh, yes, he goes down to the bleeds there. So Red finally having the first sturdy two cap we've seen all game, actually. Hammer will be live again pretty soon, by the way. So we'll watch out for that. Not only do they have their sturdy two cap, but they're even winning over here. The 2v2 in progress. It looks like they might actually be able to secure it. Their uh, hollow takes a ton of pressure. I kind of want to watch how effective this sword has been in this match. Um, he bounces his way up. Which is excellent. Oh my god, he gets the counter pressure right as somebody goes for the aggress. That always feels so good on Skyhammer. He's not really ever dropping his rifle turret, which he totally could be, by the way. Uh, so Red's in a brilliant position now. The Red Cold Foamers um, definitely have secured a lot. There's Hammer again. Can we see Blue make the same maneuver where they essentially flip the entire map again? It looks like they might because all that's invested up here right now is the Spellbreaker. Oh, no, 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 it's not the Spellbreaker. The uh, Hollow has arrived as well now. So, Red winning this 2v2. We've seen Red win so many 2v2s here, guys. So many. I mean, they've been hit hard for this. They've been hit very... Oh, okay, so a plus comes in. Blue invests very, uh, very heavily into this. And with this plus, I think we will see Blue swing the hammer here. They'll score their re-neutralizations. Uh, major punish here, by the way, from this Red Warrior, who abandons point A... To try and hold uh, the hammer. He's on his way in. Can he get in before the full, uh, full thin flips? He will. So this is a continued staggered engagement. Well, with that with that play actually there, I think we've actually seen a really good move from the red cold foamers. Uh, because they can continue to delay this for a while. Uh, just while they continue to get more score. Don't forget, this doesn't actually flip anything in anyone's favours. It's just neutralisation. Right now, because everything else on the map... Or for a second, everything else on the map is like... Not many things are capped. So this isn't even a very high value hammer right now. And uh, Blue have just consistently had three people there. What you're actually watching with the Blue team on this one is that they've had... Uh, they're just fighting staggers over and over and over again. Um, and they're actually getting kill points from this. Five points, five points, five points. Look at this. Look at look how amazing this is. If they can get Zhao down now as well. this could, <laughs> Look at this. It's amazing. Everybody just staggering into the hammer. Uh, and I think the real story of the game has actually been over here on point C. This is the red spawn. Where Red has managed to valiantly been able to continue holding it against their uh, Chrono Aggression. It doesn't look like this is going to flip out of their favor anytime soon, as long as the Revenant plays well. Beautiful little dodge roll here using Reposting... Um, not Reposting Shadows. Eh, Reposting Shadows? I need to remember which one's the dodge. Anyway, uh, and this actually enables them to get free cap here too. Back up a bit. Uh, uh, the Hammer. Blue's losing Hammer. Blue losing Hammer here is kind of gross. Um... More kill points for Reds. We're seeing that the Red Cold Foam is continuing to push through. And uh, let's start having a look at the Blue's perspective now, guys. So let's first check out this. Uh... So this Mirage build is the Meta Battle build. It's declared a dueling build on Meta Battle. I don't really know where it is because it gets destroyed by Condies so hard, frankly. Um, but he's coming in. He's hoping to off offload a ton of Condi pressure. I don't see him using his Axe 2 very well at all here. He's gone on to Pistol while Winds is live as well. Not particularly good. Okay, so he does actually manage to secure uh, a kill here. Blue needs to just give up this hammer, man. They're not winning this hammer. They're just throwing bodies at it at this point. Uh, I know it's stronger for them now because they've been double capped. Um, but I think basically we've just been watching, actually, that red team can play split a lot better. They're winning a lot of their mid-sized engagements, the 2v2s. They're stalling the 1v1s. This, right? Like, it, it, yes, the Chrono's managed to flip it now. So let's watch how the uh, Chrono is accomplishing that. Yes, the Chrono has flipped it, but um, he's still so healthy. Look, and he's actually slowly starting to win it. So we see, uh, it feels like whenever I start spectating one of the specific teams, they start making gains. It's hilarious. So blue cold foamers have a nice secure uh, cap on their close here. It's really hard to commentate uh, Skyhammer when fucking Hammer is just constantly going on. Still losing up here. Let's see if Spooker 2 can make a play. Spooker 2 looking to do enough Condi pressure to down one of his enemies, stomp it, and rally his friend before his his friend bleeds fully out. Doesn't manage to do that. He's now being plus two'd against. And he goes down. So Red will secure this hammer, nullifying the one node that the um, blue team actually had, which was nullified anyway, actually, frankly. And with that hammer finally coming out of play, we're going to see... Uh, oh my god, he face-tanked the hammer right before they come out of the portal. This is the worst thing to do in this match. What you just saw there is the equivalent 
of trying to full cap mid when Tranquility is just popped by your enemy. You know that you're about to be Zerg because you're at mid and the, get, the portal is, the surrogate is right near there. And he ate the hammer as well, so he's immediately forced off. Um, so many heavy neutralizations right now. This game has been going on for a very long time just because nobody's really holding their nodes very well. Um, I mean, nodes are always a little bit more lusty on Skyhammer just because of the nature of the third mechanic. Um, but so, yeah, we see them pushing this. I think that we're going to see the blue cold flamers once again lose. Spooka 2 still one of the only ones actually feeling healthy here. So this this is actually a demo mesmer. They have a condi mesmer. They have a de they have triple mesmer by the way, right? So they have this demo mesmer. They have this chrono, and they have a con. They're running every variety of mesmer right now. The condi one dead here, of course. The condi one's really not going to do well into their enemy scourge. We've seen neutralization land on point C, which Red's about to pick up for free with their revenant. Um, we've seen neutralization here, which their demo mesmer is going to seek to just hold for as long as possible. He also has a portal to bail out. This could be good. Um, if he ports back through and flips A, but they need to invest somebody all the way over to their enemy spawn as well. We see that actually someone is going for that over here. Uh, it's Zuja. Uh, let's see how he holds that. This is, I believe, this is a different matchup to what we saw before. The Rev almost gives up the decap. This would actually be a terrible decap. Win condition for the red cold foamers is to hold point C here. That's their win condition. You can see that they're investing their hollow up top to do that as well. It's extremely important that this chrono gets this decap. Otherwise, his team will not be progressing to the next round. But he's outnumbered, so how much can he do? So excellent positioning there from the cold foamers. I do not agree with this hollow rotating off at all right now. I do not agree with this rev rotating off at all right now. They just have to sit there and they will win the game. Of course, they can get some kill point value from elsewhere. Maybe that they want to save this. Is a hammer live that could have neutralized it from under their feet? It is, actually. So I don't know. If we see blue gets that hammer, but there's only three seconds left. We just saw consistently the red team play better there. That was extremely hard to follow the story of that game, I think. But they have it, guys. This was the slight potential inkling of a comeback that we maybe could have seen from the blue team right as I started watching them. But didn't land. A ton of kills for both teams. Look at how volatile the game was, particularly at the start. But you'll notice here that the blue bar is just slightly more barren than the red. Red scoring more caps. Red scoring more neutralizations. Red scoring slightly more kills. And of course, that leaves them with the 500 points. So, uh, yeah, really, really, really heavy game on that one. <clears throat> Let's look at the matchups here. Because I'm really quite interested in this. So, what did we have? We had Condi Mez. So, we'll pretend that this guy was Condi Mez. We had Demo Mez. Okay. We had Rev. Um, well, let's say if they were both fielding that, we could say that that was a little bit like that, perhaps. Uh, and then finally, last of all, they had their Scourge, right? So it was something like this was what the matchups were like. As far as we can evenly see this. <clears throat> But the game was very much spread all over the place. So you might actually find the Chrono. Like, this. Is, let's say this was Chrono. Chrono picking up close. Demo Mez pushing far. And you could even say maybe that this Hollow was uh, was in one of these engagements. In fact, we saw this a lot, right? The uh, Mesmer versus the Hollow matchup. We didn't necessarily see too much of the Warrior versus the Mesmer. But you could kind of say it was something like this. Scourge is opposing one another. Team with the Core Warrior just not quite having enough to uh, bust their way all the way through there. And uh, yeah, um, I think that's what we saw with that game. And uh, we'll be going through to the next round now. Uh, so let's check out the next part of Grent's game. We're into the semis. We'll be watching the Cold Famous as they roll on through. I forgot to do any highlights. Shit. Shit, I forgot to do any highlights. Hey, Liz V, how's it going? Yeah, that was a lot of kills. It was a lot of kills. When we get kill counters, it will be so much more interesting to watch, right? Uh, so by the way, I do have an open question to Twitch chat right now. I might have missed it if somebody left a comment. I still have an open question and that is, what are the icons on the top right, guys? The top left are the various PvP amulets. The top right is PvP related as well. What are the icons on the top right? I'm still curious if anybody knows. Uh, damn, the one blue, ha blue player had uh, almost all the end. Oh, did- oh yeah, I need to start watching top stats. Shit. I'll get better at that. Thanks, Steamer Gear. You just reminded me there that I want to do better with that. Boom, there you go. Caspian knows. There you go. Royal, finally. There you have it. Those guys are legendary items. They're the gizmos. How do people not know this? They're the gizmos, guys. They are, they're what this is all about. You play Grenz game to get those sweet QP to get the gizmo at the end of the monthly. All right? They're the gizmos. Super important. So, um... 
let's see what we've got going on here with the next round. <clears throat> If you guys are dicks in chat, by the way, I would just time you out. I'm talking to you one half. I don't care about your juvenile nonsense. Okay, so let's see here. <clears throat> uh, we have, first of all, on the red team. Uh, so wait, cold famers are on the rev. So we already know what these guys are running, right? Uh, actually, their characters have swapped position a little bit. So we're looking at their Scourge. We're looking at their Core Warrior and their uh, Spellbreaker. We're looking at maybe a little something like this um, for their team. We'll probably... Actually, last time we saw that they sent their uh, their core warrior close. So it would be something like that maybe a little bit. But for the rest of the game, I think we'll see this with the uh, hollow back noding a little bit. Now let's actually watch um, the blue team's composition. So first of all, we have a spellbreaker. Possibly back noding. <clears throat> we have a scourge for their team fights. And the big damage. We've got uh, the iron-blooded hollow build. Which everybody seems to be settling on right now. Potentially could play in a dual incapacity. I'll put him over here. They've got a thief of uh, some variety. But we know that he's probably going to be rotating. He's SD thief yet. And then finally they have a formal support. Massive respect to Blackjack for being one of the only people that's still actually playing goddamn proper support here. So uh, yeah, very well-rounded comp from the blue team here. Extremely well-rounded. Let's watch how the Code Foamers can deal with Blackjack and Co. So, uh, watching the opening splits here, we got Warriors picking up close. Very interestingly, immediately, by the way, we do have this Thief roaming and pushing towards far. Looks like he's not fully going for the node. Uh, that would probably be quite smart. The Hollow sitting back as much as possible as well. They're all scared to engage. Okay, so yes, we can actually see the Thief has pushed this. I don't think the Thief will ever win that 1v1. Uh, but he might. It depends if that's the core warrior. Finally, the explosion comes down on the node. We're watching the Red Scourge of the Cold Foamers getting absolutely blasted by Tyrion Swarm here. And um, basically getting dunked in the uh, opening team fight. What you're going to watch is that the Terrian Swarm blue team fight is way more sustain heavy. Uh, it looks like they've managed to land the pressure exactly where it's important as well. Uh, immediately, the Cold Foamers have lost the opening mid. They know to bail out straight away. Look at the health, right? All of them, 100% health. No one even remotely pressured right now. And that's the power of having your support there. Um, so they go for the decap here. Uh, what build is this, by the way? He's Hammer? He's Hammer Spellbreaker, guys. It's Kind of interesting. So he takes the hammer pressure. Uh, he knows he's outnumbered, so he has to sort of uh, rotate away. Gets on the scourge just a little bit. That's more for self pills than anything else. Goes up around the side. We have seen, of course, just to be clear, a very solid two cap go down for the Tyrion Swarm blue team. And uh, Cold Foamers on red looking for the aggress. They're uh, actually being hunted very hard at their spawn. This is their Scourge. He's basically just come out of the gate. He's already been hit extremely hard. Prime Light Beam snaps the kill down. Their Hollow also extremely low. The AED comes up with no one focusing him. Doesn't matter. All you have to do is charge back into the, the, the meat grinder. He procs the AED and dies again instantly. Could have taken neutralization there for what it's worth. This Hammer Warrior feeling pretty bad because he's actually been rotating and surviving quite well. I don't think we've seen him die yet. But his team's letting him down and dying in these big engagements before he can actually pull anything off. Um, uh, and also the final coup de grace from the uh, Tyrion Swarm blue team. They actually managed to get their Roma over to score the neutralization on the node. Not looking very good. We've got the Rev on defense. With assistance from his Hammer Warrior. Goes for an Earth Shake. Doesn't quite land. Evade chaining uh, through the chaotic release and unrelenting assault. Sword 4 even doesn't land anywhere. This is pretty gross. Have we seen Cold Foamers score a single kill yet? Oh, we might see the first one go through here. So we uh, actually do see the down state. We see big pressure go over it. Uh, he doesn't actually waste any of the ticks of his heal, so that's good. Uh, pressure goes onto the support. This is good for Tyrion, uh, for the Cold Foamer, sorry. Uh, Tyrion Swarm actually can get some momentum in this team fight right now, especially with their Scourge just capable of free casting off the side of the node. No Ghastly Breach to back up this down state should they manage to secure it on Blackjack here. Uh, there's basically three players fighting against Firebrand Scourge combo, and they need to get it down before respawns of the Tyrion Swarm come in. And speaking of respawns, here's the first one coming in. Holly, um, Floody on the Hollow. Moving in and scores the immediate kill. So I don't think the uh, advantage was pushed after those two kills there. And uh, we see once again that the Cold Foamers are on the back step. Uh, their Rev being pressured extremely hard by SD Thief, who's just camping him on the roads. Down he goes. Killed by the impact of a Dancing Dagger. Uh, neutralizations of land. Played. Uh, they're not playing very greedy, I don't think, Tyrion Swarm. They're just playing very relaxed, very casual. They're just taking the newt and then basically killing people. Um, and that's probably... Uh, 
all that they need to do here. They've got a very substantial lead here. We're going to see Stillness proc in a second with double cap on Tyrion Swarm. If Tyrion Swarm secure this, they'll be taking four cap. The four cap does seem to be about to land. No, uh, no interrupt coming here from Grok, who absolutely could have done something. The red team scourge there uh, at least could have thrown a shade or something over there. He's actually got big range. Um... Uh, actually, I think his marks are probably more range because they're 1,200 plus the radius increase. But yeah, with a four cap now on Tyrion Swarm, not a single node in favor of the Cold Foamers, we see a much more conventional, well-rounded, solid meta comp uh, take the uh, win in the semis super comfortably, I think. We'll watch it just a little bit longer. If anybody wants to see a build, ask me now. I'll show you the builds, and then we'll go into the lobby and we'll prepare ourselves for the... Uh, for this, oh wait, this is semis or quarters? No, this is semis. So the finals will be next. Does anybody want to see anyone's build? Boom, a kill goes, a kill goes through here, at least. So they score one kill. They score the 1v1. <clears throat> you want to see the revs build? So you want to watch the losing team's rev build. So it's invocation, devastation. I mean, this is literally just Herald, right? This is this is Meta Herald. I don't see anything different about this. He's running Leadership Runes, Marauder Amulet. Double Crimson Swords. Respect. Strongest PvP class right now, probably all round in terms of, like, the specialization representation and stuff. It's probably Mesmer. Uh, so, yeah, probably you'll be looking at that. <clears throat> I'll tell you what, with that 1v1 going through, we actually do see uh, that the Cold Foam has come back into it a little bit more. Do you think we should keep going with this? Do you think I've called the end too early? Do you think I should never call the end in one of these before 350? It's probably bad taste, isn't it? It's probably not smart. Look, they score a kill on Posey here as well. So there's a rally race in progress. Can Zhao do anything to swing it? He goes for the pressure on Posey. He rallies his friend. That's brilliant. He gets to the last second before the SD Thief Stomp goes through. They have massive outnumber here, can uh, unload huge pressure on their enemy support. Support caught with nobody there. Beautiful Greatsword 3 there. It was actually one of the mines. Guys, we're actually seeing... Uh, this is an explosives variant of Hollow, isn't it? Aren't we watching him play explosives? Yeah, he's still running Minesweeper. Respect to that as well, if he actually thinks it's still good. I'd like to see that bit of uh, diversity there. Uh, so the AED saved his life as well. This build's so weird. We've got explosive sword Hollow running AED. <laughs> it's very, very, very strange. And the rifle turret, but if he's running explosives... Oh, he's explosives and tools. What a nutter. What a nutbag. But okay, fine. Um, so yeah, they secured their home. They're fighting gallantly at mid, though they just wiped there. Let's see if Zhao can win another 1v1 here. So this is a warrior 1v1, and we saw Zhao take it last time. I think Zhao consistently has blatantly been playing the best player on this team at the moment. I don't think I've seen anyone else play better than him. He got out of the mid-engagements alive. He got the pressure well. He's been cutting around the nodes well. He won a 1v1. I think we've seen this guy do uh, pretty okay. You know, the red, the red, it, it, the, the red team is filling the hammer warrior. He's the guy that was forced to bail out of these engagements. By the way, double buff is up. I should probably show you that. Another... Oh, the prime light interrupt to the last second, but he jumps off! What a lunatic! I can't believe it. Does Grok manage to get the interrupt? He does! Oh my god, though. What the hell was that? Okay, so the prime light, he jumps down. And now we're looking at Trank. So this is triple cap. Uh, Red does uh, outnumber here. The cold foam is making some plays here. They outnumber. If they get this hollow down... Okay, it just became a 2v2. A 2v2 with one low blue player, one low red player. The red one is the first to go down. They didn't have quite enough focus. Blackjack, of course, uh, joining this 2v2 is going to swing it heavily for the blue team because he can just resustain his ally. Um... Create the opportunities for the burst to land. We now have this Rev outnumbered. It's actually an okay outnumber for him. Uh, he could kite around this for days because he's against kind of low pressure. Uh, Grok moving into even the odds. Takes the ghastly breaches. I think we're just going to see this Scourge get focused down now in this 2v2. Because he's easy to focus. And then I think what we'll see after... I mean, look, the ghastly breach doesn't land. They're actually focusing the Rev instead of the Scourge. I'd focus the Scourge first. But, I mean, I guess they picked their target... They're getting punished for not focusing the scourge. They really are. They go down. They're, they're, so we're seeing the cold foamers win this 2v2. Will they win it fast enough? Okay, so they, uh, will they win this fast enough? No, the res goes off. Look at the power of that firebrand support there. Res goes off. And uh, now they'll probably be attrition down. Scourge is finally the target. 
He gets a little bit of healing. Blackjack's down now. They're actually winning the 2v2. They scored neutralization elsewhere. If they could secure this quickly now. Oh my god, let's watch the Rev's perspective. Oh no, 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 they got plussed. No, do not plus this. I can't believe he just came in to plus this. What a waste. What a mistake it's a maker. If he hadn't plussed this, but had instead gone close, he could have sustained the caps better. So they will take trip cap right here at the end of the game, guys. The comeback is real. Did they get stillness up top as well? Did they get stillness? No, they didn't get stillness. So there's the trip cap. Let's see how they're in a position. So they will resustain it at mid. They'll resustain it at close. It comes down to this situation over here. So we said Zhao was playing well, but I mean, can Zhao stop this from flipping? Blue team right near the end of their game here. Uh, can he stop this from flipping until his allies come in? Blue knows that their win condition is just to uh, recap this. So they send their entire team to this node. And uh, yeah, they, they slam him out. Genuinely, if this warrior had been in position to help Zhao quicker instead of pointlessly going to, to Trank, they would have had a little bit more of a chance. But yeah, we do see uh, that Tyrion Swarm on the blue team take the win. Can I show what Blackjack's running? Yes, here you go. There you go. You have to pause the stream because it'll probably load out quite quickly. But that's his build uh, right there. Um, so yeah, moving back over to the post-game lobby. Let's see what we had here. Uh, was I correct in my predictions as to where everyone went? The Rev really wasn't in much of a position to roam. I would definitely actually put him more in a pressure damage oriented situation. Um, but yeah, I mean, look at that blue team. Because blue team fields someone in all the boxes, while red team don't have a support or a roamer, you're basically looking at blue team compositionally winning that, in my opinion. If your comp can hit each of the four boxes, it doesn't have to, obviously, and piloting is a huge part of this. But if you can hit each of the four boxes, you're in a much better position. Like, I genuinely love the blue team's comp there. Really fun comp. And I think it just wins on, like, all, all corners, really, right? Um, especially when you consider this hollow isn't even necessarily pure damage. It can be a bit of a duelist, too, right? It, like, sits somewhere in the middle. Uh, so, yeah, just really, really well-rounded. And, um, yep. I don't think there's too much more to say there. We're waiting for the finals now, guys. Match history. The contenders are going to be Dragon S Despair with Suffish versus Tyrion Swarm and Blackjack, with everyone else having been elim eliminated. No, these guys are not running as guild names, unfortunately, which is a real shame. Had I contacted ArenaNet to ask if they would implement more spectator tools? No, I haven't. Uh, I haven't. The only ArenaNet person I know knows I've been doing this is ArenaNet Ben because he appeared in one of these streams chats once and he said nice cast that's it I've had two words um I don't begrudge the devs for not talking to me about it obviously I'm not that uh, arrogant to think that I deserve that but I think that um I forgot to do uh friggin highlights again as well um but yeah, I, one of the things I'd really love is APIs I'd love an API that properly exposes this screen here I would love this. If we could see this, um, I could basically, the, the, the window you're looking at right now, you see where I just have elite specialization concept art rolling through. I would instead turn that into a tournament bracket. Like you could create a tool. If APIs showed this, you could create a tool that would make brackets for yourself. And that would be really good. But um, sadly, uh, uh, we can't do that. So the way we interpret it is just through that other screen. All right, so the game is beginning here. Let's see what the uh, comps are. <clears throat> and uh, we'll be rolling on in in just a second here. Okay, so first of all, we've got Tyrion Swarm. They are now red. So we've got Posey over as the Scourge damage. We have Floody also for damage. The Hollow. We have their uh, Thief roaming around. <clears throat> They've got Blackjack on support. And they have Danny in a duelist capacity, possibly backnoding. So again, very well-rounded comp. That's what we were looking at before. Meanwhile, let's take a look over at the blue team. They are also fielding a uh, roam. This is... Uh, what, what variety of thief are we looking at here, by the way? We are looking at SD. Uh, so that's pretty good. <clears throat> we're looking at uh, a rev. So I'll, I'll keep the rev in the pressure box there. Since they've got their thief, who will be more likely doing things. They have a uh, druid for their backnode. <clears throat> They're also running support. This is good. A lot of the other games, we haven't seen people properly running these comps, right? And they have a uh, Scourge as well. Guys, look at this. Look at how matched up this is. We're literally looking at Hollow v Rev. Look at that. 
Oh, it worked. This is the best overlay we've had so far. And then in terms of duelist, we're looking at Spellbreaker versus um, uh, Druid. Oh my god. Very evenly matched. Both teams fielding all four boxes. This is on Legacy of the Faux Fire. It's going to be really interesting to watch. So let's uh, go on out. We are going to be starting off watching Tyrion Swarm, who took the last match. Uh, and let's see it from their Scourge's perspective, who's going to be seeking to do as much damage at the team fight as possible. So let's see where they go. <clears throat> Warrior goes close, as we predicted. Blue team a little bit slower off the mark. They're not sending anyone to their close. So really interesting stuff happening to blue team right now. Blue instead sending their Scourge to close. No, they're not doing anything. So we really want to watch the, the, the blue uh, team here. We want to watch how Dragon's Despair play this opening. Because it is extremely strange. They aggress very heavily towards the uh, Tyrion Swarm's home. They immediately manage to push onto that node. And we see the 1v1 in progress as the 4v4 lands here. This is very, very, very odd from uh, Dragon's Despair. Basically, they've just given up their own close for no reason whatsoever. They might even lose this team fight. Let's keep watching Floody now and see how he can use his crazy, beefy, bruisery, hollow stuff to protect his team and do damage to the enemy team. Lots of pressure coming out, actually. You'll notice, actually, it's not a Scourge on the blue team. The Scourge is actually fielding a Reaper, guys. That's a Reaper that they're fielding. The Reaper gets focused down and goes down. So first down state score goes towards the uh, Tyrion Swarm, who are now excellently in the lead just because they have side and uh, they, they're actually scoring kills in mid as well here. Blackjack taking immense pressure. It looks like Dragon's Despair has decided that he's the best target to focus right now. His, uh, uh, his Scourge comes around to the side to support him, offer him pills, offer him Condi pressure. We are looking at Scourge running Sandswell here as well, instead of the Well, so that's going to him. But Scourge, uh, Scourge Firebrand combo goes down, so not as all is lost for Dragon's Despair, who are actually playing this mid-fight extremely well. They managed to get both of those kills extremely quickly, and for that, we actually see um, that they are going to win this mid-fight here. Danny, obviously, unable to aggress that on his own. And he's going to be uh, pushing instead to try and prevent a decap coming through from uh, the uh, Dragon's Despair uh, Mesmer. So that's pretty good, actually. Uh, Dragon's Despair taking the mid-fight. Also getting neutralization on sides pretty well. Uh, we'll see exactly how Dragon's Despair can um, sustain kiting around here. They're doing very well. It's sort of a 2v2 that we've watched here. So support comes to help here. This is a very good rotation from the Dragons to Spare support. Yeah, they decide that they don't like that. They're both bailing out right now. I think we've actually seen Dragons to Spare landed their portal here. So this could actually leave the Red Warrior, the Tyrion Swarm Warrior, stuck here. Tyrion Swarm suddenly not looking very good right now at all. Tyrion Swarm re-establishes their Firebrand Scourge combo to try and reclaim mid. Obviously, it's a hard-fought fight going for mid on Legacy. This is a map where t uh, Firebrand Scourge combo does very well. They've got lots of room to kite around and... Um, sustain themselves and put pressure out we basically got firebrand scourge versus firebrand mirage here um it's going to take a long time for this to manifest and that's obviously very bad for uh Tyrion swarm uh moving over to sides where there is a big story it's another 2v2 in progress the 2v2 slightly being won by Tyrion swarm right now dragons dispel on the downside looks like the reaper is such good target bait right now um but they're, they're extremely low. Oh my god, so close. The plus comes in at the last second from the uh, Dragon's Despair Mesmer, who quickly seals the deal on Tyrion Swarm's attempted 2v2 over there, which looked like they were almost going to win. Uh, coming back towards mid, we still see the Tyrion Swarm Firebrand Scourge combo trying to make something happen. They've got a little bit of assistance here. Um... But not too much. Obviously, with two of their players on respawn, these guys are just going to be trolling around. It looks like the Dragon's Despair, the blue team, is taking this very leisurely. They don't really care about this threat too much. You'll notice the Dragon's Despair is very close to being neutralized. They're starting to score the recap value here again now. Uh, very interesting play there as well. I think what we saw was the Tyrion Swarm Red Scourge. Sand swelled up to the node. Uh, off the node and his support followed him through the portal i love those little plays being enabled and what that means is if you actually field this this duo with the sand swell should both players play well that helps that the um both of them kite out and stick together extremely sturdily uh so i think we're putting proper expert play here coming from uh, the firebrand scourge combo real treat to watch ghastly breach comes down on this huge crunch massive damage Tyrion Swarm finally taking that kill there. It only took a massive crunch plus two. That cost them on sides, of course. The decap has come through as Danny was plus. Danny managed to survive here. 
Um, and so he's very scared about re-engaging because that SD thief is still lurking around on the walls. It's not a support that he got as an ally. The second he went back on the node, very questionable. I would have tried to peel away a lot heavier, maybe even get out of combat resustain there. It doesn't go in his favor. His Roma is forced off. Obviously, there was no opportunity there in the end. And what do we see here as well, by the way? Despite that victory a second ago, neutralization didn't even go through. Like, that's always a threat on Legacy. The enemy team can just keep respawning in and uh, keeping that in their favor. So finally, we see Newtland. That's very important. Um, Tyrion Swarm giving up their... Far point, uh, which they had held for free. Uh, this is going to be pretty bad as well when we see Tech actually manages to rotate in. Tech, of course, being the uh, Dragon's Despair Scourge. Uh, so we'll watch that. Back towards the mid fight. Let's ha watch out. Again, look at the same combo here. The same every single time. I really like that on Legacy. I think that's really, really fun. Uh, is it actually winning them the fights, though, with any speed? Not necessarily. Let's watch how their warrior can unload a bit of pressure. Uh, they actually managed to get the kill on at least one. We're going to see a big res attempt, potentially. No, not one at all. Signatron caught out on the Mirage, so just has to basically bail. And I think uh, it's just they're not, they're, they are winning the fights. What we're watching here is Tyrion Swarm is winning the fights, but not with enough speed. And they're getting decapped very aggressively. Not fielding a Mesmer versus a Mesmer and an SD Thief. I think I think the, the additional portal and just rotation capacity that the blue team has means even if they are, generally speaking, losing the fights, they're managing to get sides consistently enough that they are starting to get away. There's a 100-point buffer here now. Um, looking back at mid... Finally, the cap goes through. So there you have it. A big round of applause there. Tyrion Swarm gets their two cap for the first point in the game. Now, if they play this as a two cap, they could hold this. Again, they have been consistently winning. So Danny notices the decap. This is exactly what I'm talking about, right? And he doesn't get there in time. So not getting there in time. You know, he, he might be happy to sort of fight, play around in this 2v2 for ages, but he was nooted so fast. Like, look at all this time, right? These, these are all points that they're, unfortunately they're not getting. I will assume Danny would uh, escape here. Posey, of course, staying, freeing Blackjack up to rotate. This is the support, right? Blackjack rotating into this 2v2 guarantees the win for Tyrion Swarm, but it doesn't necessarily... Uh, um, it, it guarantees that they won't lose, but it doesn't necessarily guarantee their win because they won't have much pressure, right? It's a duelist plus a support, so it's going to be very low damage output from uh, Tyrion Swarm there. Dragon's Despair are happy with this as well because it's neutral. Danny now getting a little bit low. His support comes in. Blackjack taking the Merciful Intervention Blink 3. Just to reset, sustain him as much as possible. You can tell they really don't like this fight. He doesn't want to be lingering here. He knows that mid is about to blow up. So again, look at Dragon's Despair. They rotate through. They bait the support over to this node. And then they rotate through, hoping to blow up the Scourge while he's alone. So we got Posey. Posey could have sand swelled up to the side. Escaping and letting Blackjack port on. If this had happened a little bit earlier, that would have like made me geek out so hard. Doesn't quite happen. But now the two have been resustained. So this is excellent play here. Look at the Ghastly Breach and the damage coming down here. Really, really nice. Big resustains coming from Dragon's Despair, though. Very attrusive game, obviously, that we're watching on this one, guys. Moving over to this node. This is actually some of the more interesting stuff, I think. We've actually been watching a Reaper v. Hollow. And I can tell you what, if the Reaper's playing well, he, he does do very well against these Boon Reliant Hollows, right? Because you just rip all of the Iron Blooded off of them. The SD Thief Plus comes through, though, and uh, they take big pressure. Floody's going to be pressured out very hard here on the red team. Again, great support from Blackjack. Look at how Blackjack just jumps through. Nothing, Not enough going on at mid to justify him being there. He comes through. He saves Floody's life with the big heals. And then Floody just goes straight back to continue this 1v1. This is also really good because he's pulled the Dragons to spare support away from those crucial other big team fights. This is so good, actually, for Tyrion Swarm right now. This is exactly what Floody wants. This 2v1 for as long as possible. The support realizes the mistake he's made. He's coming back to mid. Is he going to get there in time? Well, actually, he doesn't even have anything to heal there because it's just Blackjack around. So that's excellent. Posey rotating off. So here we see the uh, Tyrion Swarm Red Scourge seeking to do big damage over with a plus one here. And I think he'll actually land it. They managed to get a lot of pressure out on the Scourge. Uh, Danny, despite being low health, really aggressively playing, hitting the enemy Reaper. And down they go. Big victory again here for Tyrion Swarm. And what did I say, guys? Look at the points closing down. As soon as the two cap was secured, because Tyrion Swarm are playing better on the team fights, now that they're not being constantly neutralized, they can just go home, mid, home, mid, home, mid. Because of that, they are very quickly coming back into this game. They, I, I'd actually say they're in a winning position already right now. They've scored two kills. We're looking at big staggers on Dragon's Despair now. Uh, Posey pretty low. Seeking to come towards mid. Oh my god. Right as I compliment on that, them on that though. They do actually end up getting uh, pretty aggressively thrown out in mid now. And they have lost that node. Oh and the back cap portal. What a 
huge play from Jagged to Spare. He does get the full neutralization. Oh my god, excellently done. Jagged to Spare, just when it was looking bad, with two players down on their team, they managed to just neutralize across the board with a really dirty little portal play. Oh my god, that's incredible. That's going to be stinging Tyrion Swarm so much. Jesus Christ. So now they have a very long attrissive job to reclaim mids, and they've got a very long attrissive job to reclaim their clothes. Let's see how Danny does in his current 1v1. The plus comes in from the SD Thief. They are, of course, against the Duelist. Excellent kiting here from the Dragon's Despair Blue Avatar Druid. He pulls up to the side, shakes the SD Thief off. Dragon's Despair doesn't want to have to uh, do this for too long. He also gets on the node right at the perfect time to hold it neutral just for every last little second of value. And there we go. We see Tyrion Swarm actually manages to re-sustain that. Still a long-ass engagement going on in mids. And over here, by the way, we do see that um, uh, Tyrion Swarm managed to, with the power of their Hollow, who are competent duelists, uh, actually managed to secure their enemy's far point, which is brilliant. This is far, right? Yes, it is far. Um... He knows that the SD Thief is in the area. This SD Thief from Dragon's Despair is going to be seeking to uh, pick up Waterfall with a neutralize again. Uh, Flooddy's obviously going to be extremely aware of that. That's why we see that he's staying on this cliff. Meanwhile, over the team fight, Posey has finally gone down. That is the Tyrion Swarm Scourge not able to sustain. Uh, the Stomp is gone through. That leaves the support without his, uh, his partner, basically. And uh, the mid fight flipping in favor of Dragon's Despair. But they invested so heavily onto that that we've seen Tyrion Swarm manage to... Keep this secure, and even got a pretty nice little plus here. Does this kill go through here? The SD Thief aggressing very hard on the um, enemy uh, Mesmer. Dragon's Despair, he ports out. Straight back over to mid. In theory, Dragon's Despair could have all charged through that portal now and taken a big uh, plus over there. And I think that we could have actually seen them very quickly flip that. They didn't go for that play. Instead, they're looking at the more defensive play of picking up their close. Uh, they are heavily, heavily outnumbering Floody here, who nonetheless hasn't died. I really like to see these people surviving as long as they have been on this. Uh, the Reapers come in with all that chill on him, though, there. Oh, nice little jump dodge around the side. The Ghastly Claws doesn't quite score the kill. I think we are seeing exposure Ghastly Claws as well, because that was a lot of vulnerability. The Prime Light Beam jump shot to get away. Wow, that was beautiful. Oh, my God. The Dragon's Despair Reaper's got nothing. He's left twisted in the wind now. Uh, so here we can actually see uh, Tyrion Swarm can continue to sustain and aggress these nodes because their guys aren't dying, where otherwise worse players certainly would have been. Look at this. He even comes back. Totally out duped the Reaper there and scores the neutralization. A very necessary one as well because Dragon's Despair had got their double cap. Tyrion Swarm giving every inch of rotation, actually, I think, um, as their opponents. This is a really cool final. Danny finally goes down, having just been plus. Uh, none of Tyrion Swarm in a position to deal with that. And we can actually see the Dragon's Despair beginning to open the gate. We are past 350 points for both teams. There's only 2 minutes 30 seconds remaining. So I don't even th think we'll see this get to 500 points unless Lord ends up coming through on this. Um, so do keep an eye on the timer, guys, because this could end prematurely. Uh, mid almost flips in favor of Tyrion Swarm. But uh, they uh, don't quite get the full cap. They continue to get value off of the waterfall. What is Tech doing? Hello? What? What is... What just happened here? He could have given... The, he could have neutralized the throw. The the daily wind cell. What was going on there? I actually don't understand why Tech didn't flip. Did he forget which team we was on, he was on? Oh my god. Okay, I guess he's just going for Lord, right? He didn't even care about the uh, neutralization. So he's just charging to Lord. Um, he does actually get extremely far across as well. Maybe he was just going for the portal. Okay, perhaps that's my mistake. I think that neutralization would have been really strong. Uh, but 1 minute 30 seconds left. So we see it's going to come down to Lord here with Dragon's Despair. Pushing as hard as they possibly can. Let's watch the Reaper pressure over the Lord. They're getting incredible damage very quickly can uh blackjack sustain the lord oh my god did he get a full res on that did he get a full heal somehow that was insane uh yeah lord is back up to full health that's absolutely incredible so um i think with that we will actually see because the support here because the team fight over lord did not go in favor of dragon's uh despair and Tyrion swarm managed to resustain the lord in time through this support uh, look at the Lord over there. He's on full health. I think with that, with only 50 seconds left on the clock, with the kill points that should be coming in. Um, actually, I tell a lie, okay? So, they rotated so heavily here. Tyrion Swarm rotated so heavily here um, that the SD Thief, potentially? Yeah, so if you actually look here, this SD Thief actually just ran around neutralizing and capping everything else. Oh my god, this is going to come down to the wire, guys. What, what does this work out mathematically? 30 seconds left on the map. Sides held for uh, Dragon's Despair. 
Point scores coming in still, obviously, for Tyrion Swarm as they just scored a couple of kills. We got their Firebrand Scourge combo charging towards the node. They're not going to get a decap here. Um, 20 seconds. We're gonna, actually, we're going to see Dragon to Spare take this. We're going to see Dragon to Spare. Unless a lesser debunk can happen. We need to see a debunk score here, or we need to see a debunk score here. No one on the team is in a position to do that. Maybe they'll be looking for kill points over here. The entire Tyrion Swarm team charging on this node. Uh, they're seeking to reclaim the cap. It's down to the last second. 454. What? Oh. I think we saw Tyrion Swarm wins. Tyrion Swarm wins by one point. By one point. Potentially because they managed to score that recap at the last second. <laughs> Christ almighty. Red got that kill right at the end. And they reclaimed Quarry, which gave them one final point. Which gave them the win. Jesus Christ. Oh, I should have replayed that. I should have re I should have set up a replay. I forgot to do replays. Oh, God. I've got to, like, think of, like, 20 different things to do at once. Look at this timeline, guys. My God. Down to the timeout by one point. Yeah, I'm never going to be good at the maths of that in the moment. I don't even know. How frequently do points come in? Is it every two seconds or every one second? I don't even know. Or is it for the three seconds? I don't know. Oh my god, what do we say here? Very attrissive slow games. You see how, uh, uh, in terms of kills, look at how few skulls there are here, guys. Very, very, very few. Um, and that's just what happens when you get good players that are properly sustaining, pulling themselves out of the plus one situations and keeping themselves alive as much as possible. We saw a lot of kills over here at the Lord Push, obviously, and towards the end of the game. We saw some here, but look at the mid game. Look at how little there was going on in the mid game. Really fun game. I wish that you guys were queuing as actual team names so that I could fucking remember you and we could be hyped next time you queue together instead of just Tyrion Swarm and Dragons to Spare. Pro tip, please do that. You'll help the scene out a lot. Um, but yeah, that was cool. Looking at top stats as well, we see Posey securing top damage as you'd expect, the Scourge. You also see Tech, the Scourge, scoring top damage over here as well. We're also seeing this Scourge take top revives as well. Possibly was running blood, I didn't actually check. Blackjack getting uh, top healing and revives as well, obviously on support. Top kills going down to the rotation, the Roma. This is exactly what you'd expect. Top defense going on to the duelist on Danny there. If you actually looked at the, the, the stats on the red team there, it was uh, pretty goddamn good. Back to the post-game lobby just to uh, sum this up. Look at how evenly matched these two guys were. Very standard. Um, I know there's been some murmuring that Firebrand Scourge support may um, may not be as good now that the game's a little bit more bursty, now that Magi's amulet doesn't exist. But there we saw two teams playing basically the exact same roles compositionally, and we got a really good game out of it, actually. Uh, a couple of interesting swaps. We see uh, the utilization of a Rev. Rev is not terrible, obviously, right? Like, they almost won that. Uh, Dragon's Despair. It came right down to the, the wire. Um, and we, we get representation of both the Strong Duelists right now. Uh, pretty cool. Pretty cool. So there you go, guys. That was Grent's game. And, uh, yeah. I think it was a pretty fun tournament. Match history. <clears throat> we see Tyrion Swarm with Blackjack taking the win. Dragons of Spare and Suffish in the finals. We started following, by the way, Ronald McDonald is our daddy who got to the second round, but not the quarters. All the same. So, uh, yeah, we basically followed Ronald McDonald to here. Then we followed the Cold Foamers. And then we followed um, Terry and Swan. That was Grant's game, guys. Hope you enjoyed. Thanks very much for watching. I'll hopefully be back for some more tourneys and things later. I'm still looking for a ton of feedback on this stuff. Uh, I'll set up instant replays and stuff later. But, uh, yeah, good stuff. Let me know how you think about it all. And uh, I hope to see you next time.